Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's fine. Yeah, I've done this before. This <laughs> came out first rodeo. Nate did a really great job today he with did. the with the A and an A one. Mm-hmm. Very happy with that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. We like to have fun around here. So as you start to tune into this and see us here uh, doing our live streaming, um, currently I don't show any viewers. I don't even know where to look on the screen to see how many viewers I have. But I'm just gonna sit tight right over here and uh, hang out for a minute while we wait for people to come on. So uh, those of you that, that have already joined us, thank you for, for already being here. Uh, we're just gonna take a couple more minutes to kind of give everybody some time to shuffle in. You know, nowadays uh, nobody starts meetings directly on time, right? <laughs> I know I'm certainly guilty of it. <laughs> Hope those of you that are with us today uh, are so far having a great day and uh, that it's sunny and bright where you are. I know that there's parts of the country right now that are dealing with some very severe weather, uh, down south in particular, and uh, I've got plenty of family down there, so I certainly wish them and all their communities well. Certainly hope that uh, everyone comes out as unscathed as possible from all this. And hopefully my volume level is good for everyone that's able to hear me right now. Fantastic. The Q&A is open on the Microsoft Teams uh, as well as on our Facebook live stream. Uh, feel free to pop in with any questions or comments or just shout outs for hellos. And uh, I'll be sure to address your questions as, uh, as timely as fashionable, as timely as possible, uh, without obviously maybe stopping myself mid-sentence. Uh, I know that I have a habit of doing that myself, so I'm gonna do my best not to stop myself mid-sentence, but we'll see how all this goes. How do I look on that one there, Abby? <laughs> Looking good, right? If you'd like, yeah. If you wanna hop in and drive me around, that's fine. All right. Tell you what, we'll go ahead and, uh, we'll go ahead and get started here. Uh, so, wanna thank you for joining us. Uh, both via our Microsoft Teams as well as our Facebook live stream. Um, if either of you or any of you are on one or the other and would like to see what it looks like on the other, feel free to pop over. If you've got the invite, uh, that would have the links to the Microsoft Teams stream. And if you're on the Microsoft Teams stream, all you have to do is just go to Facebook and look up P PHS West Inc.'s Facebook page, and we are live streaming on that as well. Um, as you can see, I'm seated right now. Uh, we'll get to why I'm seated in just a moment. Start with doing a brief introduction. Uh, I'm Jason Pugh. I am the National Sales Manager here at PHS West. Uh, PHS West itself has been in business uh, just over 25 years now. It's been a long and, and really good road for us. Um, we've been a very fortunate company, but we feel like we've been fortunate through the fact that we constantly strive to be as best as we can. Um, you know, really focusing on our customer as well as our product as being the, the two biggest driving things that we have as far as constant improvement. Our customer support, uh, we, we pride ourselves really highly on that uh, as well as we pride ourselves on the quality of our product. Uh, I myself, uh, Jason Pugh, National Sales Manager. Been with the company 15 years now. Uh, going back to the days when I had more hair on the top of my head, less hair on my face, and none of it was gray. Uh, also a couple pounds lighter back then too. But uh, 
truly valued my time that I've been here with PHS West because one of the best joys that I get out of my job is uh, historically I go out in the field and I do presentations like this in person. And in doing that, it allows me the opportunity to see our customers utilizing our products face to face. And one of the things that always resonates really well with me is the feedback that I get from end users that talk about how great of a product it is for their department, um, how nice it is to no longer go home at the end of the day with aches and pains, uh, no longer being sore, uh, no longer having risk of injury from doing a lot of the tasks that we're able to help them out. Uh, today we're going to talk about a number of our pieces of equipment, number of products that we, could, that we manufacture, uh, number of applications that we work with, as well as give you an understanding kind of broad spectrum of what we do. Uh, if you were to put what we do in the absolute simplest of forms, well, we make motorized equipment to help make your job easier. Uh, if you have something heavy to move, rather than having to manually push or pull it, lift or lower it, we provide a motorized means for doing that. So it helps to drive uh, efficiency through allowing one person to perform a task that might normally take two people, two trips, or even three people or more trips, and make it a one person, one trip, safe operation. Taking a step up from that, the word safe, what we do is we make it so that these tasks that are performed are done safely via the fact that we use motorization. Now, the nice side effect that we get from providing a safe piece of equipment that allows somebody to do something more efficiently is what I talked about there just a minute ago, which is that employee satisfaction. Um, it's kind of a byproduct, if you will, of having a motorized piece of equipment inside of a department. Now, we obviously do not motorized as well, but primarily when it comes to talking about uh, safety and ergonomics, we're talking about motorization. So, like I said, we're going to talk about a number of pieces of equipment, a number of things we can do to help you out. If you have any interest in uh, talking with somebody in our sales team about this equipment, uh, you can go to our, if you're already on our Facebook page, we've got the links with our phone numbers and uh, all of our contact information is on our Facebook page. If you're on our Microsoft Teams meeting, well, then you probably have already got the email that has all of the information for us as well. Uh, we are available to help you with whatever your needs are. We kind of take a holistic approach to everything we do. So we will ask about the application. We will ask about the tasks being formed. Get ourselves as, as good an idea as we can about what it is that you're doing. And we don't just provide product for the sake of providing product. We provide a piece of equipment that's tailored to meet that application's needs. Very much like an ergonomic tool is designed for the operator, our ergonomic equipment is designed for the application. So that being said, I'm going to go ahead and hop out of what is quite literally the most comfortable chair in the house. And that is the first piece of equipment that I'll talk about here, which is our motorized patient transport chair. So this guy, we've been, uh, we've been working with this uh, since 2009. Uh, very handy piece of equipment that gets used primarily in the healthcare market for doing transport of patients into, out of, and throughout a hospital. Real simple design, pretty much for everything that we manufacture. Uh, it's all for the most part key switch operated. So we've got ourselves a handy dandy little key right here, which controls our on and off for the power of the unit. We have the ability to drive the unit in either forward or reverse. We can control the overall speed that we're gonna be set at, as well as we can control the speed that we operate within that setting based on a throttle based system that allows us to basically work the throttle very much like a gas pedal on a car would work. So a quick example of speed control. I've got this unit set at full speed right now. I can engage this throttle and I can go relatively slow because I'm basically not pressing very hard or very far on my gas pedal. If I did want to go faster, I just engage the throttle a little further and I can drive faster. 
all of the pieces of equipment that we manufacture have this uh, potentiometer based throttle built inside of it. Speaking specifically to the patient transport chair and its operation, when you're going to go to pick up a patient, load a patient onto the chair, pretty simple operation. We have a lever that's on the side, which is a brake for the seat. When the brake is engaged, the seat does not rotate. So if I'm going to go to pick up a patient, I'm going to rotate this chair around, engage that, that brake, that lock, and now the chair does not rotate. Currently, as it stands, without using the motor, I can rotate this chair a full 360 degrees without power. Now, as you go to load a patient in, you definitely don't want your patient loading in and having that chair potentially swing out on you. So we prevent that from happening by engaging a simple foot brake, which is right on the back side here. And let me go a little further forward in my camera view to help give everybody a view of it. So we just press down on that little foot brake right there, and that engages the brake, so now the chair will not rotate on you. If we were gonna be loading a patient, that would look very much like this. Engage the foot brake, have our seat to the side, load our patient in our chair, release that brake, that lock, swing the patient around to the front, lock them in, and they're ready to drive. Now, if you have concern about the patient falling out of the chair for some reason, there is a seat belt that's equipped, and as you can see, it's quite long. I don't even think I've got it all the way out to its full extension there. Nope, I didn't. So quite a long seat belt that buckles you in, allows for plenty of room for as large of a patient as we need. The armrests on the chair have the ability to fold up so that they're out of the way. They can also expand out and be removed. If you have patients that have a need for, uh, maybe they had some orthopedic surgery or something along that lines, uh, we do have leg rests that are available as well. Unit comes standard with an IV pole, location for an oxygen tank, and power cord. There it is, power cord. Plugs into any standard outlet, uh, any regular 110 wall outlet, and it's hospital grade green dot. Optional item on it, if you happen to have somebody that's uh, traveling with a roll stand IV pole, we have the roll stand available for them, or the roll stand holder for them, which, let me disengage my foot brake, bring myself a little closer here. So what this arm does is this allows you to have a roll stand with you, where all you have to do is just slide that roll stand in there, close it down on there, tighten it on, and now that roll stand travels with you rather than you having to hold that while traveling. This also has the ability to lock in at multiple locations. So if you need to go through doorways, you have the ability to do that. So that's one of our pieces of equipment. I'll be right back with another. I know, sounds kind of like a truck backing up to your loading dock, right? Well, this is our motorized cart. It is a battery operated, just like the patient transport chair piece of equipment, just like all of our pieces of equipment. Um, same type of operation, key switch for on and off, forward reverse ability, overall speed control available, throttle based design. What we have that's really nice about our cart, and let me actually bring it back in distance just a little bit is what you'll notice is that we've got six wheels built on this, on this cart. The center wheels are the drive wheel, so that's our power. What that does is it allows us to take care of moving forward and reverse. The corner casters on this are all free swivel, which just allow us to be able to have kind of a foundation so we don't teeter-totter on this thing. One of the nice features that's an optional piece on this is what we call a retractable drive function. So what that does is with the push of a button or by turning off the key, 
we have the ability for that drive wheel to lift up off the floor, kind of like landing gear in an airplane would or a fifth wheel in a stretcher. Now that that drive wheel is off the floor, we have the ability to move this cart any direction we want manually. So if I, for example, wanted to move sideways, I have that ability. If I wanted to move diagonally, so, so be it. Think of that as the uh, kind of the Wonka Vader, um, the ability. Uh, if any of you remember back to Charlie in the Chocolate Factory, or Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory, right? Not Charlie, Charlie was the new one. Uh, Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory, Gene Wilder. Um, the Wonka Vader goes any direction which way you want. That's what that retractable drive function allows you to do on a motorized platform cart. Lower that drive wheel back down, goes to the floor. Now, I cannot move that cart because the brake is engaged and it's not gonna go anywhere unless I actually engage the throttle. I still have my drive wheel in the center, which creates a center pivot point, which gives me a nice short turning radius. But in order to go forward or reverse, I need to engage the throttle. Now, we've heard that beeping enough already, right? I personally don't prefer to drive with the beeping because, well, you drive long enough with the beeping and it kind of gets on your nerves. But it's great if you have a high traffic area or an area where you just need to make sure that people know you're coming around a corner or something along that lines. What I've just done is I pressed a button on the control, which allows us to have that brake or that, that horn off. So now as I engage the throttle, minus the sound of the lawnmower in the background, which some of you may or may not be able to hear, the cart travels completely silent. Again, throttle-based system. The further I engage, the faster I go within the speed that I have set. Now, this cart is set at full speed, just like how I had the chair set at full speed earlier. If I wanna travel slowly, again, I can travel nice and slow. If I wanna speed up, I can engage the throttle and travel faster. And having that ability works in both forward and reverse. So here I am, traveling nice and slow, engage the throttle further, and I go faster. Now this platform is in essence what we started with as a company. So going back to the first motorized carts that we built, they were for endoscopy departments. Uh, what ended up happening is over the years, uh, people that would see the endoscopy carts driving around the facilities, they would say, I want that, how do I get it? And they'd reach out to us and we ended up again through our innovation and customization we ended up designing carts that work now for almost every department within a hospital uh, a great number of material handling applications some hospitality um, and we've even done like some construction stuff so uh, if you name it we can work it uh, one of our newest ventures is data center market where uh, people are moving servers and server racks things like that this cart that we're looking at right here is 23 inches wide by 44 inches long for a usable deck on it. From bumper to bumper, that makes this cart 53 and a quarter inches long. If we need a cart to be a longer length, a wider width, uh, a shorter length, width we're kind of limited on a little bit, but what we do is we build our carts to each application's needs. So this is actually a very common cart for doing like material handling, just general material handling. Throw some boxes on here and you're off and running. If you needed to do something specialized uh, where maybe you have some wire shelving, some metal shelving, uh, some kind of racking, cabinetry, whatever it is that needs to go on here, we build that for you. Or if you have a cart that you like you just don't want your staff members having to physically push or pull that cart around. We'll build the platform size of this to match your cart so that you can just take the wheels off of it, mount it onto our platform, and now you've got a dedicated motorized piece of equipment. Very user-friendly, uh, very simple to use. Again, like I'd mentioned earlier, turn the key on, stand behind the controls, and off you go. Now, right now I'm driving the cart in a forward orientation. I'd already mentioned that we have the ability to drive the cart in either forward or reverse. 
personal preference for me, driving in reverse. It doesn't matter what I have here or how tall or how short I am. If I'm traveling in forward, I cannot see directly in front of the cart. So when traveling, I may have to look around the sides of the cart in order to see what's directly in front of me. On top of that, for me personally, uh, I just have a preference comfort-wise traveling in reverse. So when I am traveling in reverse, what I will do is I will stand off to the side of the cart at a position where I'm not going to clip my ankle. I'm going to stand slightly in front of the cart to a point where my arm is resting at a comfortable position. I'm going to stand tall, and that actually applies to whether I'm driving in reverse or in forward, because if I'm going in forward and I'm trying to push this cart, it's not going to go any faster than I engage the throttle for it. If I'm going in reverse and I'm trying to pull this cart, it's not going to go any faster than I'm engaging the throttle. It's a powered piece of equipment. I can quite literally move this cart with one finger. So as I'm traveling in reverse, I will use my index finger. Some people like to use two fingers. Some people like to use three. Some others like to use their thumb and, and kind of a grip orientation like this. But I control that speed of the, of the cart, and I just walk right along with it. Now, as I'm traveling, I have a full clear field of vision of everything that's in front of me. I'm standing tall. I'm not pulling on the cart. I'm letting the cart do the work for me. Now, again, as I'd mentioned, healthcare was the foundation of us. And uh, there's a number of applications within healthcare where a motorized platform cart like that will work. Uh, going back to our original roots of endoscopy, working with dialysis when they do both in those departments when they do their acute bedside cases, uh, food service for meal delivery, uh, linen for clean linen distribution, uh, sterile processing for delivering trays throughout the facility, surgical tools, things like that. Now, over the years, the call for additional means to move something came to us. And one of the things that's really great about that motorized platform cart is that, like I'd mentioned, it's a dedicated motorized piece that you just turn the key on and you drive. So it's a, a one task or a one type of job or a one person uh, solution that's a very user-friendly piece. Now, if we come into an application where we have a large volume of carts that we're moving, to take and get 30, for example, motorized carts like that might not be necessarily economically feasible. So with that, we enter in our third piece of equipment that I'm going to show you today, which is a motorized tug. Bring this around so everybody can get a good view of it. So this is one of our models of our motorized hooks. This is what we call the 4000 SLH, which the SLH stands for a static drive, which is the drive wheel being on the floor all the time, lifting hitch. So what this card actually does is it has an actuator driven set of forks on the back side here which will grab onto the cart that you want to pull and allow you to pull it. Now, the nice thing about a tug, like I'd mentioned, if you have a large volume of carts, this is a very cost-effective means to make any number of your carts motorized. So, if I were to be grabbing a cart, I could very easily just drive this up to the cart that I want to pull. On this particular model, I've got a little up-down button. I press that up button. And those teeth on that fork lift up to grab the cart that I'm going to engage with. If I'd like, I've got straps that will allow me to have a secondary means of securing the cart. Uh, when it comes to the straps, I often refer to them as suspenders. Now, I do the suspenders motion, but I'm not, I'm not wearing suspenders. But 
I do that suspender motion and I, and I liken the hitch mechanism that's on the back side of the tug to a belt, which I am wearing a belt. So this belt is helping keep my pants from falling down. That's what the teeth on the tug is, are going to do. The first, the primary engagement with your cart. It's gonna prevent your cart from separating from the tug. If I'm going over some rough terrain, elevators, uh, up and down ramps, any of those kinds of areas, if for some reason my belt fails, in a scenario where I'm moving up to a, let's call it 2,000 pound load, uh, realistically with this particular tug, we can actually go up to 5,000 pounds. So if I'm moving up to a, a 5,000 pound load, even if I'm moving 300 pounds, 150 pounds, the last thing I need is for that to come disengaged from my, from my tug. Now, my belt is gonna hold my pants on. But if my belt fails, I'd like to have a, a backup way to make sure I don't lose my pants. That enter my suspenders. So these straps simply hook onto your cart. And this way, if you do come disengaged, you're not gonna lose your cart. Operation of this unit, again, just like the two previous units with the motorized chair and the motorized platform cart. Key switch on and off, forward reverse control, overall speed control, throttle based system. Now you may have noticed that I haven't yet talked about this blue button here that's on the front. Get to that in just a second. That's our emergency stop. So anytime I don't want the unit to drive, I simply let go of the controls. That brake automatically engages anytime the throttle is not being engaged. If for some reason I need the unit to stop immediately, that's what this blue button is for. So if I'm traveling in one direction and I press that button, it comes to an immediate stop. I've still got my finger engaged on the throttle right now and we're not traveling anywhere, nor will we travel anywhere until I release and then re-engage that throttle. Now, we also affectionately call this blue button the belly button stop switch. At least I call it the belly button stop switch. If for some reason I happen to get myself in a scenario where maybe my back's against a wall, say I'm driving into an elevator and get myself up against the wall, if I happen to engage the throttle going the wrong direction, it will hit my belly button and stop and it's not gonna pin me up against the wall. Hi, Amber. Thanks for joining us. So that's another one of the safety features that we have built into the motorized tug, the motorized cart, and the motorized patient transport chair. Now, why, 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 why is the big question, right? Why would I get something that's motorized? Oh wait, we already covered that, didn't we? We started the show with that. Safety, efficiency, employee satisfaction. I just like to touch on those things so much. All right, so just like the motorized cart, how we talked about the platform can be made to whatever size is appropriate for the application, the tugs are the same way in the fact that the hitch is designed to meet whatever need your cart has as far as your cart design. So if your cart has a simple lip that's on the front of it, Something like these forks here are gonna work really well because that lip can engage with those forks and be our primary means of grabbing onto that cart. If your cart happens to have a smooth flat bottom, we have hitch designs for that. If your cart happens to already have a hitching system built into it, we can design our tugs hitch to mimic one side of that hitching system so that there's no change in how you are transporting anything that you're currently using other than the fact that it's now power driven. And again, has the ability to be able to move as much weight as you need, quite literally with one finger. No, we're not done yet. <laughs> I'm gonna bring this guy in. Now this is basically what we started with as a company. 
This is our motorized endoscopy workstation. Now this happens to be one of our designs for our motorized workstation. Uh, it's actually kind of the classic, if you will. This particular size of cart and general layout of cart is what we started with as a company when we got into the healthcare field some 20 odd years ago, uh, building motorized workstations for the endoscopy departments when they do their acute bedside cases. All those same functions and features that I talked about previously. Key switch on and off, overall speed control, throttle based system to control the speed that you're going within the speed setting that you have. It's a mouthful, right? Uh, emergency stop, brakes engaging when you're not traveling. But here we talk a number of pieces about some of the customization and design that we can do within a workstation. So this card is designed and set up to allow for housing equipment and supplies within the cart. A number of designs that we have will incorporate different drawer sizes, drawer quantities. We do vertical divider cabinets. We can do shelf heights at different locations. Slide out keyboard tray, fold down keyboard tray, oxygen or CO2 tank holders. Kind of you name it, we, we build it within there. Again, same features, stand tall, drive the piece of equipment. All of this cart right here, just this cart itself, weighs probably close to 400 pounds, maybe 300 pounds, somewhere in that three to 400 range. And again, I can move all of that quite literally with one finger. Now, I'd mentioned about driving in forward and reverse before. If I try to drive this particular cart, it now gives you maybe a little better perspective of what I can and cannot see driving in a forward orientation where I might have to look around the cart to see what's directly in front of me. Uh, give you a little size perspective and size comparison. This cart probably looks a little bit big to me or big next to me. And that's because I'm not exactly a towering lumberjack over here. Um, for those of you like Amber that were here earlier today, um, you would have seen Nate working with our carts. Nate's six foot two. At least he says that's what he is when he wakes up. Um, I'm five foot five. At least that's what I tell everybody. My doctor says I'm five foot four, but what does he know? So I cannot see what's directly in front of me. If something's right here, there's zero visibility on it. So that's again where driving in that reverse orientation, even though pulling is not good, we are not pulling. We are standing tall, we are walking with our equipment. And I kind of liken this orientation of driving to walking a dog. If you were here with us earlier, Nate would have used the same analogy. Think of it like this is a 10 year old dog that you've taken for a walk every day of its life for 10 years. You know this dog's walk, this dog knows your walk. All you have to do is stand tall and hold that dog's leash and right, walk right along with it. There's still more. <laughs> Motorized dialysis workstation. So again, just like the endoscopy department, this department, the dialysis, they have to travel to a patient. So basically, they bring the whole department to the patient. With the motorized dialysis workstation, just like with the endoscopy workstations, there's a couple of designs that we do as kind of our primary foundation. Now this is showing an example of a split cart. Well, Jason, it's not split, it's all together, right? Well, it has the ability to split. So right now, as we travel with this, everything is in one piece, traveling together, allowing one person to do the job safely in one trip, efficiently, and it's preventing them from injury, and it's preventing them from going home going, ah, or ouch. 
with the split design, which we do in both our endoscopy and our dialysis applications, as I'd mentioned, we have the ability to, when we get to the patient, separate these two units. Because one of the biggest things that we hear from our customers over the years is space. Space is always at a premium, especially in a hospital. So we counter that space concern, especially in a tight ICU, with the ability to just, by pressing on this little button that's right over here, you might be able to see this little black ball. Hopefully the camera view is good enough and the screen is big enough that you can see it. We press on that black ball and allows these two pieces to separate. So now we have, in this particular case, our dialysis machine, which can go right near our patient, and our water treatment system, which can go near our water source, and we just run the hoses between the two of them. In an endoscopy application, the motorized portion of the cart would have the equipment that the physician is going to work with, and the trailer portion would have the supplies that the nurse or the tech would use. Let's say we do an isolation procedure in an endoscopy application. We can leave those supplies out in the hall. So now we don't have to worry about throwing away supplies after the case is done. Again, just as I talked earlier with the motorized cart, that drive wheel is our pivot point. It gives us the ability to rotate the cart without power. And then we also have that same functionality with the drive wheels lifting up off the floor. So now we can move this cart any direction we want manually to be able to fit even better into those tight spaces. So there we go. That particular cart, about 33 inches, I think, roughly from bumper to bumper on this one. If I want to park this spot into a 34 inch wide spot parking space, I can pull up next to it, push it sideways, and get myself right into that 34 inch space. When it's time to go back to the department, lower our drive wheels, they're gonna go back down to the floor, grab our cart, which has a simple hitch mechanism on the back of it. And what I didn't show earlier, and let me get myself as a little bit of background here for you, backdrop, is we have the ability to have this hitch, which right now could be something I might engage with my leg. We just simply with our foot, we can lift that hitch up out of the way. And now we're again, space, we're adding only a minimal addition to the overall size of this workstation, of the, of the customer cart. Lower that piece down, real simple engagement. I'm just gonna bring the two pieces together and I'm gonna listen for two clicks. Two clicks is the sound of a proper engagement. One, two. Now this cart again operates as one solid unit and it gives me the ability to drive away. Yeah, that's right, of course I'm bringing the chair back. I'm 41 years old, come on, give me a break. Going about putting myself in the chair a little bit out of sequence, but here I am back in the most comfy seat in the house. Uh, this chair, I tell you what, uh, you get a patient in this, you get somebody sitting in this chair and it is, it's comfy. <laughs> <laughs> so that's all of the uh, kind of the wide berth of what we can provide as far as motorized transportation. Uh, again, whether we're moving a patient, some equipment or supplies with a simple flatbed platform cart, a large volume of carts with a motorized tug that can connect and disconnect as needed, a specific endoscopy department tr transport for doing acute bedside cases, or a dialysis application for again doing acute bedside cases. What we do is we manufacture equipment that is designed to meet your specific needs. Feel free to give us a call, talk with us, send an email to our website. Whatever it means you prefer to get a hold of us, we are here for you. Coming up in just a moment here in our comments box, you'll see us with our uh, info at PHS West email address, as well as our website link. 
So do please feel free to check out those links. Um, come talk to us. We're, we're happy to help. With that, I'm just going to hang out here in kind of nice silence and enjoy my chair while I wait and see if anybody does have any questions that we need to answer immediately. Otherwise, thank you for joining us and hope you have a great afternoon. Right now is when we need some good background music, some elevator music. I don't know about Jeopardy music. I think, I think maybe, well, the do-do-do, that's like if we're waiting for, I suppose we're waiting to see if people want to ask us questions. So that, yes, okay. Oh, yes. Um, if you are on our Facebook link, uh, by all means, feel free to hit that like button or the heart or the ha 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 button if you want to just laugh at me because you think I'm kind of funny looking or maybe funny sounding. I don't know. Maybe I'm just that charming that you need to give me a ha ha ha. Oh, look, we lost a viewer when I said that. <laughs> <laughs> oh geez okay all right thank you again everyone for joining us certainly greatly appreciate it appreciate the, taking the time out of your day to to view me uh showing off some of our equipment here certainly hope to talk with you soon and take care <laughs>